Hello and welcome to MIP TV and today we've got a really interesting book. Bob and Bob reviews books on a regular basis. Bob Cook here. Hi Bob. <laughs> there again. Yeah. Book 25 here. Book 25 here. Book 25. <laughs> and um, this is a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to give it a good shot. Borderline Narcissistic Schizoid Adaptations. Correct. And, and it's by Eleanor Greenberg. So, so let's just kind of, for those people who may not kind of understand what that means, Borderline Personality Disorder, what is it, Bob? What, what does it? It's got a bad press to start off with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're talking about personality disorders here. We're talking about how to work with disturbed people. And if we look at the word borderline, it goes back way into the psychiatric literature. And um, I, I'm not sure when it was first coined this term, but I think we're going back into the 1950s and 60s, even, probably even before. And back then, the, the, the terminology simply meant um, a person who was on the edge of psychosis. So if you look at neurotic on one side, which is the worried well, if you like, mm -hmm. and on the other side of continuum of health is psychosis, which is out touch with reality on the other. The middle ground is where people veer from, um, you know, the neurotic side to the psychotic side and may have psychotic, um, you know, break breakups or uh, fluid psychosis or partial psychosis, and then be able to actually be more operative in the neurotic side. So it's somebody in TA terms who would have a fragile sense of adult. Yes. Yes. So so their self concept would be quite fragile and yes. and sometimes it wouldn't be enough of the adult to be able to hold them into reality, in, into into equal and present time with others, would that be right? Correct. And these people um, have a bad press and you know, uh, if they're in psychotherapy, they'll be there for many years because their level of functioning is uh, impaired, if you want to put that language to it. And in relationships particularly, in relationships particularly, their emotional regulation and their ability to hold consistency and continuity over time and their ability for emotional regulation is um, fragile. Yes. Yes, and it's really interesting. Before... We, we actually pressed the record button. Bob and myself were talking about an idea in humanistic therapy. Margaret mm. Warner, one of the many kind of tribes of the, of the person-centred uh, nation, and I quote from the book, the tribes of the person-centred nation, and fragile process. In other words, yeah. a fragile sense of <coughs> self. And, uh, Very good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I've not read that book, but after, the, after talking about it off, uh, you know, off camera, I think I might well go and buy it because... It's a wonderful, uh, I like. I really like that sort of term, fragile, you know, processes, because I think for a borderline person, uh, that sums that up. And, you know, you know how, how we've gone over time, and especially in the psychiatric world, and, the, you know, and looking at this, um, it, 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 how can I explain this? Often, people who are, who, who, who mental processes and these sorts of fragility level are misdiagnosed or psychiatrists or mental health professionals don't know what to do with these types of people, and they're called borderline. So you get a whole whole misdiagnosed or multi-diagnostic categories, which people call borderline when they don't actually know what to do with these yeah. types of people. And it's interesting here in the UK, the reality is is that it's is that someone who has uh, and, and I'm aware that we may be having people who watch who may have been diagnosed with BDP. And I want to be as respectful, you know, yeah, my... uh, absolutely. And, and But one of the things I've known through the years is is unless you've got literally full-blown psychosis, the mental health services sometimes just say, well, they've got a personality disorder. And Correct. the treatment ends then, or, you know, it's yeah. just a case of maybe yeah. you need some therapy. But it does need yeah. a specific approach. It does. Yeah. It does need a really deep understanding of the, you know, the the kind of psychological construct of this of the pe people who have this, and I'm guessing that this book gives an overview of both. 
Yeah, Eleanor Greenberg, who's 76, 77 now, I think, I might be wrong, I don't want to dismiss but she's, I think she's in her 70s, is a very well-known Gestalt psychotherapist. Um, she, I think she was vice pres president of the Gestalt you know, Institute in New York, and she's written a lot about how to work with disturbed people. And this is her latest book, it came out last year, in fact, so it's a brand new book. Now, she doesn't actually talk much about the schizoid adaptations, even though she's got that in the title. Uh, probably fair to say that the majority of this book is about how you work with people who come from a borderline position or a narcissistic position in a disturb, you know, a fragile sense of self is a good way of looking at this. And she has, um, you know, very specific um, uh, we could call them treatment plans, if you like, um, or models or tips or uh, in this book of how to work uh, in this world with these people. Yeah, and, and I think it's one of the interesting things is there's forever a debate, um, certainly in the world of counselling. So what's the difference between counseling and psychotherapy? A mild, mild joke used to be forty pounds an hour, but through, through, <laughs> through, through knowing through knowing you, Bob, in the institute, and and you know meeting colleagues who've been trained there, one one of the things that that, that really is a difference that I've come to accept through the years is that psychotherapy training is of a longer duration, and part of the long length yeah. of that duration is about formulating specific treatment plans for for folks who yeah. struggle with you know borderline personality disorder or, or personality disorders and this yes. book seems to link into it very much so and um what i like also about uh eleanor greenberg is the accessibility of her language it's not uh, it's not written in any pathological way no. or any way which is uh, linked in all this psychiatric long terminology. This is very much for psychotherapists. And I really do like some of the mnemonic, um, you know, you know what mnemonic means? No. When you, is it the right word where you have a, like a, 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 a letter which symbolizes a particular word? It's oh, a way yes. of remembering things. Yes. Is, this, is that the right word? Yes. Mnemonic or, I'm not quite sure, mnemonic or, anyway. So she's got one for borderline, which is called misery. All right. So M stands for mirroring, I stands for identity, S stands for splitting, E, e stands for engulfment, R stands for, I don't remember off the top of my head, a regression, and Y stands for yearning. Right. And then she talks about um, how, how these particular features um, are present with the uh, the borderline character, and, and where, in terms of um, their histories, um, uh, the um, process begins, or at least uh, we hypothesise about what brings about the world of the narcissistic or personality uh, person, and. She writes in a very respectful way. Yes, yeah, and, and yes, and I think I think it's I think it's really really interesting that um, when working with clients who present this, it brings up a couple of things for me. One is the level of competence the therapist feels they have to work with a client. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I made a referral today just for that reason because I thought it may, may need a different approach. And I think that's I think that's an ethically ethically sound view of things, um, but also making sure that the person who comes to see the therapist gets the very best service. Correct. Yeah, monomic. I think that's the word for these. Uh, okay. These I was thinking things. acronym, Bob. But what no, do, monomic. What, what, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're, it's a very good point, because you know people with these fragile processes will be in therapy for a long time. Yeah. This is a short-term work, and also it's for for um, therapists who have a certain level of specialism mm. and a certain level of training, um, because you have to work in a specific way with people who um, have these, these levels of, levels of relating and these levels of early emotional confusion. Yes, um, which is a much better way of looking at. Um, 
these types of clients that they are coming with very early emotional trauma and confusion. So anybody who presents with a personality disorder this level will have high levels of trauma, high levels of abuse and high levels of early emotional confusion, which means that today they're, they're operating from a, a very fragile place. Yes, one that's informed by their history and their childhood. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's a book I might actually buy because it's titled my interest, Bob. And uh, I, might, I might buy it. It's recently new. It's 2016, I believe. That's right. Very recent. And uh, as usual, we'll put a link in the in the comments bar below. Let's have some comments. As always, this isn't a paid placement. Bob does this just for the love of, you know, just just the two of us chatting away about therapy and literature in general, which is always a joy. And uh, we'll we'll put a we'll put a link to the book. So if you want to kind of inspect it, you can. And as always, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.